Kathy Griffin sitting in for Larry. Can you believe it? I know. <laughs> anyway, Larry's on vacation. But joining me tonight is comic, writer, and entrepreneur Joan Rivers. Her new show, How'd You Get So Rich, airs Wednesday nights on TV Land. She'll be appearing at the Venetian Ballroom in Las Vegas later this month and in early September. You got to see her live, by the way. Her live shows are fantastic. That is where the fur really flies. And Joan joins, joins us live from QVC, where I think there's a whole separate room where they just print her money. I really do. <laughs> anyway, they're in Pennsylvania. Joan, how you doing? I'm so excited to talk to you. You were so great last night on the, the roast for Comedy Central. If people don't know, you were the roast mistress and you were terrific. Joan, you knocked it out of the park. Now, first of all, let's take a quick look at some of the proceedings. Okay. Our Joan started out in Brooklyn as little Joan Malinsky. You know, my Joni, Jewish girls are supposed to grow up and marry doctors, not support them. <laughs> Jonal is not an Orthodox Jew, but men still <laughs> through a sheet so they don't have to look at that face. <laughs> and Kathy Griffin. Yeah, my good friend. You call yourself the biggest star? Is that what you said when you come out here? The biggest star in this room? That's, that's, that's calling yourself the thinnest girl in Kirstie Alley's house. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Joan, do you have any idea how excited I am that you would refer to me as skinny? Oh, you are, you are so thin. You look like you went to a reunion of Schindler's List. I'm telling you, you are just thin, thin, thin. That is That makes me emotional. It is so sweet. Yeah. I just... I have strived for that and starved myself just for this moment. Well, I, yeah, David Brenner, who likes women that walk out of Auschwitz, David <laughs> Brenner would think you're hot. <laughs> That's how All right. you are. That's it. I'm calling him. Although you probably heard I'm in a romantic relationship with Levi Johnston. I, but, I saw. Um, maybe to make him jealous, we'll, we'll call David Brenner. Now, tell me how you felt watching the roast what did you like about it? What didn't you like? Give me the dish. I was so nervous for everybody because, you know, you want everybody to be good, but not better than you're going to be. Because I knew <laughs> I was coming at the end. And every time somebody would do a joke, I'd say, damn, I can't do Danny Banaducci because they've just done it. Damn, I can't do a, a, a joke on, on, on whatever. And so I was nervous. I was and very excited at the same time. I thought it was wonderful. All right, now when we had dinner, at first you were telling me in New York, you were saying, oh, you didn't know if you wanted to do it. Now, do you get now that in a really twisted way, it really is an honor? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I who didn't... are you speaking to and who are you not speaking to? I'm speaking to everybody, I think. Uh, you especially. The, uh, but when I thought I was going to, when I decided to slap you, I thought, oh, my God. There goes that friendship. And, you know, I only have three friends left. Uh, they're either not talking to me or they're dead. And I was so scared that would kill my Christmas list this year. Okay, Joan, I have to tell you, I forgot to tell you that night. I swear my jaw buzzed for three days. You clocked me. It was like a ghetto girl fight. I didn't, I swear I didn't mean to. I swear. <laughs> but the next night we went to Cher's house and we yes. made up. That, that was, we, how about that? What about that moment? Where the heck were the crew, the camera crews then? Can we just, sh you called me up and you said, let's have dinner. And then you call me and Kathy says, would you mind if Cher joins us? And you go, I can't believe this. And we went to Cher's house and we it sat It was such around. a great moment. Well, although, you know, Cher doesn't live in a house. She lives in a compound. There's yeah. a difference. It's, it's huge. And I, it's it was, huge. I kept thinking with all the plastic and all three of us, don't let us serve anything <laughs> flambe. Please, God, we'll go up. <laughs> I think I got some implants on the way out, and I didn't really feel it. Some sort of she, cheek lifting. She, she's just great. I, I'm crazy about. Well, you. tell me about your your history because the reason that I know you guys go back, but I um, love when you told me one time that Cher came up to you one time and said that she was angry when she wasn't in the act. She's very smart, Cher, and um, uh, I used to use her in the act, and I had a, a cut out of her. Remember, she had the big horn thing. <laughs> And I would take it and throw it on the ground. And I would say, that's your favorite position. And I just had all these jokes about it. You know, uh, she had an IUD with call waiting, this and that. I mean, just on and on and on about Cher and what a slut and tramp she was. And, we, and when I took her out of the act, finally, she came backstage. She said to me, you took me out of the act. 
and she's so damn smart. She knew that yeah. people don't talk about you unless you're a big star. I oh, adore her. Amen to that her. sister. Yeah, she's she's really cool. And um, one of the first times I got to talk to her alone, I said, "Is that true? Did you really say that to Joan?" And you know, she said, "Yeah, of course I want to be in the act." Yeah. And by the way, on the way over there, you just threw these in your purse from your collection. And I want it. Can I read you a text that I got from Cher? Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Um, it was nice to see you and Joan. I have mad respect for her. Can you love tell her, her I love my bracelet and want to buy 10 more? I'll pay. I will send it to her. I won't make her pay. Well, maybe wholesale. Okay, but it's very unusual for an A-lister to want to pay for anything. Yeah, but you know, she's not Jewish, so she doesn't have my feel about money. She's willing <laughs> to pay. But you know, she was a All wonderful right. mother. We, um, I love that Elijah Blue is staying at the house. Yeah. I just, you know, because uh, we go way back together. We go back when the children were really small. And that's a... Tell me about, did you ever have an uncomfortable run-in with a celebrity that you put in the act, and how do you handle it? Uh, the only bad celebrity I've ever really had um, uh, was, was uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Russell Crowe, who's just an he... SOB and stupid. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only bad one. He doesn't talk to me. I'm really upset. And you know who else? Kathy Bates got angry because I made a joke that if she had not been on the Titanic in the movie, it would not have gone down. And uh, <laughs> she wouldn't talk to me for months I, after that. But you know what? I have to say that's a pretty good list. I mean, you know when people say, oh, I've been kicked out of better bars than this? Those are two pretty good bars to be kicked out of, actually. Yeah. Who does not speak to you anymore? Whitney. Whitney, Okay. Whitney right. Houston, sh she gave me the cracky, sh shaky finger. It was not a, not happy with me. Well, I used to always say that I was scared. She doesn't talk to me either because I had a joke that I was scared that I'd be cremated and ended up being snorted by Whitney Houston. And uh, that would upset me because I'd end up in Bobby Brown's ass. And that was my joke. <laughs> and I got a letter, but a shaky letter. And the problem is what? Uh, I'm sorry? I mean, what's the problem with that? I, do I know? No, Do it's a perfectly innocent, harmless joke. You know, they don't understand we're comedians. And you're there to make a, a joke and make people laugh. And that's my, I know. Jo that's my job. All right, hey, look, we're going we're gonna to talk about money and we're going to talk about your show and how much money you have and how you spend it and a lot more inappropriate things when we come back. So wait, we'll, wait. we'll be right back. Stick around. John and Kate, we have to discuss them. Yes, we'll talk about Yes, the whole game. <laughs> Stop crying. You'll be okay. <laughs> It's me, Kathy Griffin, back, and I am uh, from Kathy Griffin, My Life on the D-List, which is on tonight, by the way, the season finale, which is excellent. And in addition, you should take a look at a clip from Joan Rivers' TV Land series, How'd You Get So Rich? Let's take a look. How did you get so rich? So I clean toilets and clean sinks. You go inside into the more private and less pleasant areas. I bet this is the view Nicole Richie sees after every meal. What's the most expensive thing you ever bought? Keep going. <laughs> That is me before life was suction. Oh, the number would be somewhere around 15 million pieces. 15 million people want to look like assholes. I've got an idea for a novelty. Me having sex without the guy turning gay. <laughs> okay, Joan. This show is so fantastic. Now, my first question is, why do you think people don't always want to talk about money? How do you get them to just talk about it? Old money doesn't want to discuss it, you know? Mm -mm 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 -mm. New the money. Fon, fon, fon. Oh, fon, fon, fon. And maybe they're talking about it, you just don't understand them. You know, they're all, <laughs> fon, 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 fon. What? What are you saying? But new money, I love new money. I love people that are still living in trailers, but they're rich like the limos on blocks, you know? But yeah. I, I got them all to talk, and the show How? is. How? What is your secret? Uh, the secret is they know I'm a piece of new money. So mm -hmm. we all feel compatible, if that makes sense. And people, Kathy, Ted, your new money, new money yes. is fun. I'm brand spanking new money, and I love to show it off, including yeah. my Joan Rivers jewelry and my fancy watch. I'm going to mug myself just for this watch. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Uh, I love when people say, uh, uh, I'm having a good time. I've made it myself. I've come mm -hmm. from nowhere, I've made it myself, and I'm having fun. One man said to me, I've got Alan Greenspan on speed dial. Now that's rich. Oh. 
That, you, that is money. That you know what, is money. You know what rich is? If Oprah right. ever calls you for a loan, you know you've made it. <gasps> Wouldn't that be great? Uh, well, I don't know, if Oprah. If Oprah even just called me, I would just wet myself and then faint. I don't think it's going to happen. But, oh. Joan, I need your advice because I've just completed my first book, Kathy Griffin, yes. official book club selection, coming out September 8th. Please pre-order. Now, I loved your book, Enter Talking. So tell me about the process of how did you decide what to put in the book, who to offend, who to protect, how did you decide? Okay. First of all, make a list of all the good-looking dead actors, and you could say you slept with them, because they're not going to okay. come after you. That's very important. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I, tell the truth. People are not stupid. Tell the truth. And you've got such a story. I told you at dinner. It's going to be a huge success. Either that now, or... Now, I did yeah. say in the book that I had um, relations with Barack Obama. Good choice or bad choice? A Barack Obama, very good choice. Very good choice. And it's still a little edgy. So that's okay. good. People will look at you. I had now, relations with are you, Michelle. Are you making... Why did I just I said that. that. Maybe, it'll make, you know, maybe it'll go on like eBay or something. We can sell that piece off. Oh, we can sell the tape that we have of us swinging with the Obamas. Us swinging with the Obamas. <laughs> and we're not saying they get that to get publicity for our shows at all. No, no. Well, you're up for another Emmy now, my darling angel. <gasps> Joan, I want to win that Emmy more than I, I... I would trade in my mother for that Emmy. Is that wrong? No. Not, no. She's old. Okay. No. <laughs> Let me ask you. You have two, right? But it's not enough, Joan. It's not enough. I'm like, my Emmys are like my new money. I can't have enough. So where do you keep your Emmys? Well, I sleep with them. So I do a lot of cuddling and spooning. Okay. And um, every day I make sure they're real. And every so often I just prick myself with them to watch the blood. Yeah. Is that <laughs> sick? And isn't it great? When I got my Emmy, <clears throat> as well Tell as me. my Tony. Mm -hmm. <gasps> uh, uh, well, I don't want to push. But... Uh, it was, it was one of the happiest moments of my life because, and I'm sure you felt this way, it's something they can't ever take away from you. That's it. Oh, they cannot absolutely. say it, you're And it's over. kind of unbelievable for a couple yeah. of gals like us that do our thing and tell our jokes and sometimes get a little trouble. And it's sort of an amazing moment, is it not? Yeah, it's great. I was so happy for you. And you know, I am happy for very few people. Oh, I'm bitter as can be. I, I don't like most people. I think they're wrong and we're right. That's why we're friends. <laughs> if I All ever right, lost um, my middle finger, I would have nothing to say. <laughs> well, mail it to me. I'll use it or vice versa. That can be like our, our pact that we have together. Now, um, I, I don't know if you're... I hope you're supportive of my new romantic relationship with Levi Johnston. I saw... I, see, I don't like young guys. I, 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 I'm always scared I'll wake up and think... Is this, you know, my date or did I give birth last night? So I, I like an old, I like an old guy, if that makes sense. Okay. Well, well, please get ready for Levi Johnston because he is getting ready for you. Hi, Levi. Okay, so Levi is backstage with the toddlers and tiaras crowd. I oh. mean, this is, they're primping, not Levi, but I'm telling you, that is a green room that you're not going to see anyplace else. And we are back in 60 seconds. Stick around, Joan. Okay. Joan Rivers was served up on a platter during her Comedy Central roast, and boy, did we tear into her. Here are just a few of the highlights. And now it's time to bring up the man of the hour, comedy legend Joan Rivers. I haven't had much sleep. Um, I had a terrible, terrible nightmare last night that I was at my mother's funeral. The worst part was I was 75. Joan's face has been lifted more times than Bristol Palin's prom dress. Can you say that? This isn't a roast, it's an autopsy. Oh my gosh, Joan Rivers passed away four years ago. Nobody told her face. You are my friend. You know what you are, darling? You are a thief. Yes, you stole my act. You stole my gaze, and you stole the face of the Burger King. I am not happy with this. <gasps> oh, I love it. Joan is going to turn the tables and put me in the hot seat next. This is Joan Rivers filling in for Kathy Griffin, who is filling in for Larry King, who is on vacation. And hi, Kathy. Great to have you on. 
Hello, Joan. How wonderful to see you. How wonderful to see you. Let me ask you, seriously. You know, gay men love strong women. They love you. They love me. They love Liza. They love uh, uh, Richard Simmons. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Why do they love us so much? What do you think? I think because in a way we're on the outside looking in like they are you know i kind of identify with gay people because they've got a struggle and an uphill battle and i feel like you and i have had that our whole careers yeah okay because i could who found you first did the gays find you first oh no i i found the gays by mistake which is that my first boyfriend tom um, now has a boyfriend named David, <laughs> so I don't know if, if the chicken or the egg, which came first, either I turned him gay or he was gay and I liked him because of it. But, um, yeah, I, I, and also, you know, the gay audiences are just so fantastic. I call them my unshockable gays because there's nothing you can say that's going to shock a gay audience. They've heard everything. No, the only thing they will laugh at everything except Barbara Streisand. If you say anything, they get... <laughs> If you dare to say no. she's cross-eyed, my guys go, what? Because no. I have one joke in my act that uh, it, she can cross the street without looking to the right or the left. And they just go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the only That's because joke. you're making fun of the holy messiah that is yes. Barbara Streisand. That is Barbara Streisand. Okay. I understand it is an altar that we all serve at. All right. Now, you and I go back a long time, a long, long time. Um, what was the first thing, because there's so many things I want to ask you, and people don't know because they know you were smarty and funny and things. Uh, talk about the first time you knew you were wealthy, because I've got, you know, how, how did you get so rich? The money is so much on my mind because of the show. Um, what was the first big purchase you made? When did you know, I'm going to be okay in this business? Well, I bought a house year two of Suddenly Susan, and I bought this house that was way too big for me. And Brooke Shields was making fun of me, and everyone's saying, what are you going to do with this big house? And I remember saying... Well, if I can afford it, I'm going to buy a house so big I could die in this house. Yeah. And they were saying, what are you talking about? I said, I bought a house big enough so that if I never worked again, I would be perfectly happy in that house the rest of my life. And that's, are you I know still... it's boring. I wish I could say I, bought, I got a bunch of blow and some hookers, but it was just a house. No, no, no. But are you, are you happy in the house? Do you think you're going to go even bigger? Because you know what happens. People get you know, bigger and bigger and bigger, and the houses get bigger and bigger and bigger. I love it. I want more. I love working. I love getting stuff. The best feeling is to be able to take care of my mom. That's sort of the most important thing. But in addition to that, I do love things. I'm materialistic, and I find that things define me and make me happy and better. Yeah. Do you like fur? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, um, I, I like things more than people. Uh, I like things and dogs, if I would have to pick. And then I would pick people third. Okay. Now, the other thing is, last night, you were out with a young, young, young man. But that, what's yes. your real life like, the real romance in your life? Because I The hate, real romance. Yeah. Go ahead, well, go you, ahead. You, of course, are, are always advising me to find an older, wealthy guy. With a cough and, and a nurse. That's right, with a nurse, and but although not a young, sexy nurse, right? Because I don't want her no, mixing up my no. plan either. A, a bad cough, a nurse. A bad and, cough, whooping cough, one might say. And a nurse. And a now, nurse. do I have to pay for the nurse as well? Because I mean, yeah, then he's I'm rich. Just spending money. He's rich. Okay. Why didn't you nurse? marry the rich guy? Who? Steve Wozniak? Yeah. Why didn't you? There was oh my God. I mean, you would have been set for life. I know. I know. And there were a billion reasons to love him. Um, but you know, I guess the chemistry just wasn't there. And this weird thing happened, which is that when we were seeing each other, he met someone else and married her in three weeks. Yeah. Well, that hurts. So I was going that out will with, happen yeah. sometimes in a relationship. I was going out with a professor, and while he was engaged to me, his wife became pregnant. So I went through heartbreak. <laughs> well, of course. But it, and know, the least he can do is, you know, pay her and the kid to go away, and then come back to you and find true love and get a bigger house. Do you think you'll get married, or do you think you just live with someone now? I probably wouldn't get married again. Kind of been there, done that type right. of a thing. But you know, like an idiot, I got a tattooed wedding ring, and I'm freaking divorced. So, you, oh my God, you have a tattoo wedding ring? Yes, I foolishly believed in love and I was wrong. It turns out it's better to believe in work and money and success and material things. Oh my God. I, I was going to get a and, tattoo. And children yeah. and animals. It's yeah. all about the children and the animals. I have a tattoo, but I'm Jewish, so it's a, it's a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Is it right above your butt crack there, like all the young girls have? Well, it used to be on my shoulder, <laughs> but it's right on my buttocks now. <laughs> now we don't know where it, wherever it landed is fine with me. If I ever right, want to well, make toast, I just look down. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm, right, 
Joe, know. We've I already know. been far too inappropriate. We're both fired, just so you know. They told me in my earpiece we're both fired. I um, love you. I love you, and thank you so much. And my romantic lover, Levi Johnston, and I had one hot date last night. And I'm going to tell you guys all about it. So, Joan, goodbye. And I'll next, get ready for my Levi.